Um, Bron, speaking of Bron, Bron and Kyrie, you know, set out the game against Miami. They got blown out. Then um, Miami came back. They played and uh, what's my man name? Uh, Deion Waiters. Yeah, Deion Waiters got his revenge. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> cooked them, handed them another L. My question is, how do you feel about NBA players sitting out games for non-injury related issues? I hate it. I, I personally hate it because I feel like you get paid to play a game. There are people out here that would kill for your position and play every second if you ask them to. Literally. Literally. And these superstars, of, of course, being, you know, they don't ask to be role models, but they are. You know, and for them to, it kind of instills, you know, for this generation, like we were talking about off air, like, you know, they, they want instantaneous type things. They just want the big lights. They want, you know, the, the perks and everything, but they don't want to put in the hard work which is playing during the season. Yeah, we get that the playoffs are when it quote unquote counts, but you have to play during the season to get there. You know, and I just feel like it sets a bad example for the kids coming up. Like, well, I mean, if I'm tired this week, I just won't play. You know, my team will be all right without me. You know, I just feel like that's that's terrible. And then coming back on the other side of it, of it being a business, you know, there are people that pay to come see you play. And I understand if it's a serious injury, you know, because we definitely don't want somebody to be hurt, you know, as a person. But, I mean, if you're just sitting out because you're tired, like, ain't you supposed to be working out every day anyway? Like, and my thing is how old is Kyrie? 23, 23 24, 24, something like that. Like, what are you tired for? Like, I get that he has um, pre-existing injuries that, that lingers on and stuff like that, but – if, if it's not in the injury report, I don't want to hear about it. That's every player in the league, you play. <laughs> like I don't, I don't want to hear about it. Like something gonna be hurt, man. Like everybody's playing with something hurt. You know, they back hurt, they feet hurt, they head hurt, they got a cold. It's something going on. But you get paid millions of dollars to play basketball. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not sitting out because you're tired. Like who gets tired? In the NFL, y'all have guaranteed contracts. So if y'all don't play. So I'm gonna go down. Y'all might not be. You see, you know, like well, maybe they should change that in the NBA. Maybe they play more. I'll, I'll give you a story about that. Uh, I think it was like 2010. Uh, the game we played against the no, it was 2009. We played the Eagles on Monday night, and playing the Eagles at home. My brother got injured. He got a concussion. Then I told my meniscus the same, the same game. So next week was a bye week. And so you know. Had a rehab Dubai week. The next game after that was uh, Atlanta. I sat out that game. So that next Monday, I forgot, I think he was playing in St. Louis that week. My agent called me on Monday. It was like, yeah, um, but if you don't practice this week, they're going to put you on injured reserve. And if they want to, they can take half of your money, the rest of your salary for that year, be on injured reserve. So I knew mentally, I was like, Man, I can't go out there. My knees messed up. I can only run straight. But with that incentive, I played that game. I mean, I, I wasn't 100%, but what you said, was like non-guaranteed contract, you mm-hmm. you got to do what you got to do. But, you know, LeBron and Kyrie and them, they got money coming from everywhere. Exactly. So it's like, you know, it's, it's nothing to them. They miss a game, but they're not going to miss that check, you know. That's what I'm yeah, exactly. Right. If I miss that game, I'm going to end your reserve, so I can't play no more that year. I don't have no film to show – because coming back next year ain't guaranteed, and then have my salary, the rest of my salary for the rest of the year is gone. So it's more incentive. Oh, I'm I'm playing, you know. But for them, some teams they 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 do rest players. The Spurs rest players, mm-hmm. but also they're the second best team in the league too. Mm-hmm. So, and, but it's LeBron James. He's a superstar. If he played in San Antonio, it would still be the same because he's a superstar. But if Kawhi sits out, it's not a problem. So it's like it's a fifty-fifty thing with me. So I think you guys got it. I mean, it's just it's stuff for a fan. You spend yeah. that much money to come watch, mm-hmm. um, especially when you're getting hit over the head about come watch, come watch the game. And I definitely understand there's a huge difference between guaranteed and not guaranteed money. Um, I kind of get it like late in the season. Like I'm okay with it then. I'm okay with it kind of. I'm okay with it sometimes when Pop does it. Sometimes, you know, I think we all feel like he does it out of spite sometimes, which is <laughs> which is very clear. Um, I also grew up watching basketball like late 80s and 90s, so it's hard for me to fathom if you're not hurt. 
Yeah. Why aren't you out there? Because that standard that was set, that you know, it was probably you set out games. It like, it's pride. It was pride. Exactly. It's a pride thing. So it's, it's just hard for me to get. Like I do understand it from you need a rest because you know if you play AU ball, you you play a lot. A lot of players don't get the rest, and I do get that. But for me, it's hard for me to take it because of. I mean, for me, yeah, man, it's your like I look at it. If it's your job, just like any other job. Nine to five, whatever. If you don't show up to work and you don't have to leave, it's gonna be problems. So you either not gonna get paid for that day, or they gonna write you up. You be threatening to get fired, and that affects everything. You know your whole livelihood. My thing is just play. If you banged up, you need a little rest. Control your minutes. You know what I'm saying? Just don't play as many minutes that game. You know what I'm saying? Play like 15, 20, 25 minutes or whatnot. Fans got their money's worth. You know it should be all good. You know what I'm saying? That to me is just cheating the game. And kids look at them like we grew up. We was looking at the Jordans and they were like, "We got to suit up and play." You know, you know, we looked at AI a little again, bang, thrown around and got everything. He played every game. He ain't want to come out like they. They had to get on him about you need to sit. They had to fight with him to sit. You see what I'm saying? That that's a pride thing. You know what I'm saying? That and that shows your warrior spirit. That shows you earn everything you get. When they sit out games and and reportedly there's nothing wrong, it, it comes off as entitled. And I and I and one thing I'm really worried about is how they're gonna teach the youngins coming up. They're gonna think, well, I can sign for two hundred million, play fifty games and stuff. Like that's not cool. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna create a lot of animosity and everything in the future. So they need to do something about that, man. Put like, some fine. type of rule up or something. Do something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, but, but you know, we'll see what happens. Um, last question: Alabama linebacker Ruben Foster was sent home from the combine. From a heated verbal altercation with a hospital employee, according to reports, Foster grew impatient with a long line for exams and told the hospital worker, do you know who I am? And the male hospital worker on the press said he would have to wait like everyone else. Foster then said he would put hands on him, and the worker simply said, do it. Thoughts on Foster? Got to go. Like, I just feel like that goes back to, like you said, entitlement. Mm -hmm. Like, you already entitled and you ain't even got signed a contract yet. Yeah. You know, like, you had to combine like everybody else. Like, you're you're not entitled. It's I can see if it was something. I can't see if it was something else. Because, like, it's literally a line. It's like you're standing in line to go to the bathroom. What you going to say, I'm next? You know who I am? <laughs> like, I mean, and that's what I mean. Like, that entitlement, it, it's it's getting younger and younger for these kids. Um, and I think it goes back to kind of what, what Wilson just said. Like, we grew up in the, watching the games in the late 80s and the, in the early 90s and stuff like that. And that pride that they had about playing, you know, and being a player and not being a baby, not crying about this, worrying about that, but playing the game that you claim that you love so much. So I'm like, on one side of it, you're thinking, like, you're going to let the fact that you got to stand in this line to continue to be at this combine to possibly get signed by a team to do the one thing that you swear you want to do your whole life, but you don't want to wait in this line. Like, it, to me, it makes no sense. And I definitely, I agree with them sending them home. Like, like these are protocols. These are things that are going to happen in real life. Like, you're not a kid. You're not a child. Like, these are things that has to happen. Like, get over it. I don't like people like that. And the NFL is one sport <clears throat> where – they, they, they against you if you come off like that. Mm, like, yeah, they'll, they'll find you in the locker room. It's constant examples. I mean, we talked about T.O. a couple of shows. He ain't even in the Hall of Fame. I thought, you see, like, that's the one spot we're like, who you think? Okay, we're going to get you. you you'll you know when you get got. It's just <laughs> like that. So, I mean, what's your thought? To be completely honest, I don't think it's going to affect them at all. Yeah. Um, It's just a news story. Uh, 32 teams countless scouts, man, general managers, whatever. It's probably a general manager who probably say, man, I like that. I like I like That's I, true. I like that. I like that. He don't, he don't take nothing from nobody. They they'll flip that negative to something positive. Like, yeah, I like I like that he talks down to lower so I know he's on a football field, he's gonna talk down to somebody who's sorry, you know, whatever. Plus his his game tape talks so much more than that one little incident. They'll like I said, NFL execs will take that as, oh, he's young, sweep under the rug, and then, you know, Nick Saban, he'll sweep under the rug, and everybody, you know, if he was a fourth round through seventh round or undrafted guy, now his future would have been real messed up. Him going to Alabama, being a top one of the top linebackers, it's just a little, like a little, little pinch. All right, thanks, guys, you know. 
But y'all still want me though, so <laughs> it, it sucks. But at the end of the day, what I realized when I was playing football that the NFL was a business. The business is to win, but more so to, to make money. And you make more money when you win. And you if you go to a good team, you make the team good, you get more money, more games. So, like I said, a lot of NFL, NFL execs, GMs, managers, owners, they, they ain't thinking about it. And it's sad because you think you would want to be a humble guy, but he did play for Alabama. That's that's the the local NFL team in Alabama, and they probably get so much stuff down there that we don't know about. <laughs> so probably true. Yeah, they probably, he probably man, who are you, man? I could go to this <clears throat> place and get so and so, and it's probably true. But that's the culture down there. But I don't think it's going to be a big effect on his draft status or going forward. I mean. Just let's be honest. If Ray Wright, if Ray Rice didn't have that video, yeah, he would have been playing. But that video came out, and that's a different story. Somebody could say, yeah, he got sent home because of this or that. There's no video, no video, no crime. It's sad, but yeah, that's you what need it videos is. nowadays. Yeah, that is one I gotta get this out. Uh, <clears throat> Lavar Ball, Lonzo Ball. <laughs> oh, we were supposed to talk about this last yeah, week. Yeah, Lonzo Ball pops. You know, he's been on a rant a lot, man. You know, son going to be better than Steph. Um, he would never brand with Nike. He said he's his own brand. He said he's only interested in co-branding. Uh, what's your thoughts on this, this, this guy, man? Yeah. The fact is this. <laughs> I'll, I'll respect LeVar Ball by doing this. He's having his son's name out there. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad that Lonzo – it's not being quiet. He's being quiet, he's he's just being quiet he's because um, I give you an example. There's a kid that used to play for Miami Dolphins named uh, Brent Grimes. And his <laughs> wife, crazy. His yeah. wife, yeah. His wife Miko. All she do is she's on Twitter. you know Twitter, you know. Yeah, yeah bro, but just go on. <laughs> but, but Brent never says nothing. He always he always says my wife is her own person. She says whatever she wants. It's not me telling her to say this, but. Teams keep signing him. He keeps getting paid. He's doing great on the field. It's not affect his wife's opinion is not affecting, you know, his play or his money. Lavar can say whatever he wants, but I bet you, if the Lakers came, if Milwaukee came, if Denver came, if whoever Philadelphia, who else, the Brooklyn came, he'll wherever drafts whoever team drafts him, he's going. And Lonzo, like I said, he's been quiet. He hasn't said anything. But you don't know what's going to happen to Lonzo in the, in the pros. Like, my favorite basketball player was Penny Hardaway. Yeah. Penny was a beast in Orlando. Got hurt. Right it here. was a wrap. Right and it, was, it was always Lord. what ifs. You know what I'm saying? Who said that? Lon like, Lonzo could have a first good two, three years. The next you know, knee injury. He could be a, he could be a Mari Stoudemire. Greg Oden. Greg KD, Oden. Yeah. So, it's just – I understand LeVar is trying to hype him up, and but he's, it's getting to a point where it's ridiculous now. Yeah. So. Um, he reminds me of the, I won't say typical, but parents. You know, that's how they, yeah, the, yeah. And that's why I like, you, I'm pretty sure you'll find out about that soon <laughs> with coaching. You know, I coach uh, high school girls. Um, parents are a different beast. Man. Yeah, that's what, I mean. that's what I mean yeah, now. Yeah, like, yeah. now the parents are a different beast. They see the child and, you know, they call themselves trying to parent and be there and, and, and be helpful and, and, like you said, hype them up, um, but not realizing that sometimes you're causing the child a little bit of pain because it's like, yeah, it's a good thing that he's not saying anything as far as uh, Lonzo's not saying anything, but you still have to remember, like, you're an extent of your parents and your parents are an extent of you. So, yeah, it, it might not affect them, but there may be those people like, I don't want to deal with him in that. Yeah. yeah, he's a great player. I feel like he'd be a great asset to us. But the the headache and the stress, it's not worth it. You know, and he could be, I mean, he could be setting him up for failure. You know, not saying that it's going to happen. And we all, you know, if you're a parent, I'm pretty sure all you care about is making sure that your kid is good and you make sure that, you know, you push your kid and make sure they're doing the best that they could possibly do. But all this nonsense about, you know, he going to be better than him and he not signed with – if Nike came and knocked on his door right now and said, I got 500 mil for you, what's up? 
sign on the dotted line. Like, let's stop playing. And then he be preaching, <clears throat> hey, man, when the they money did. comes, you know, you got to take it. Like, That's what yeah. I'm saying. So, like, I just feel like that at some point, you know, it's cute when he in high school and middle school and your parents all hype you up. But, like, he's a grown man. You know, he's going to be making these decisions for himself. Like, he's signing these checks. You're not, you know. Yeah, you helped him get there, but you didn't do the work that he had to do. So um, I hope it doesn't hinder him going forward. I don't think it will really. Um, I just feel like if it continues to go like that, like you're going to have certain issues that some people might not be okay with. Octavia said it, so she spoke for us both. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to just end it with this, man. It's like, for one, he's not even the clear-cut best college player. So how you be better than a two-time MVP? And we all know people who, you know, get that stuff, what happens when he, he, he catches you, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be, you know, like that, like a Kimba-type victim. You just like, man, you just giving up and everything because the barrage is coming so much. You know, it's always better to chill and be humble because you don't want the extra bulls out. Now his son got to deal with that heat. Like and, me, yeah. and people don't give pro sports the credit it deserves. Like, you know, you hear a lot of dudes, like, I could do that, I could do that. Like, nah, son, I'm like, it's a reason. Like, you might have had the talent to do it, but it's more than that. It's little things. It's, it's discipline. It's the work ethic and everything. not saying he don't have it, but these guys were you in college with NBA experience, with world experience. Like, you, you're not going to just come in off the break and just do whatever you want. It's rare. Even if you do, you still won't have growing pains. Like Kevin McHale said, you know, I told Kevin Garnett when he was a rookie, I told him two things going to happen. Either you're going to get better, but I guarantee you're going to get your ass whooped. And that's just how the league is. You that's how you learn. You know, you you get dunked on a couple times. Like I got guard this dude different. You know what I'm saying? So putting that bulls out on where everybody, I'm like, oh, that's the dude who follows him. I'm going right at him. Come on, man. And then what you gonna say then when he's getting torched and he can't even play and he on the bench because they gotta protect him? What you gonna say then? You know, so why even put that bulls out on him and everything? Like, like let that man game prove who he is. And his game speak let for his itself. Let his game promote him, and, and then the rest will follow.